The Terraform Taint command marks an existing resource in state data for replacement. On its surface, this seems like a useful feature. However, it's actually a ticking time bomb that can sabotage your environment. In this episode of Terraform Tuesday, we'll explore why Taint is bad and what you should do instead. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, NedInTheCloud.com, and welcome to another edition of Terraform Tuesdays. A couple quick things before we dig into the Terraform Taint command. First, I just mentioned my website, NedInTheCloud.com, and I wanted to let you know that I recently moved the site off of WordPress and onto Netlify using Hugo for static site generation. The website is now way faster, and with the new publishing workflow, I'm planning to blog a bit more often. So if you're looking for a companion piece to this video, check out the link in the description. Second, I want to recommend again, my friend Anton Babenko's weekly Terraform newsletter, weekly.tf. This isn't a sponsored thing. I don't get a kickback from Anton for recommending it or anything like that. I just think it's a great resource for keeping up with the Terraform community. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. With that out of the way, let's talk about Terraform Taint. Sometimes you have a resource in your Terraform configuration that just didn't provision quite right or you need to force the replacement of for reasons outside of Terraform. Maybe it's a virtual machine whose setup script bombed and you want to replace it. Maybe it's a storage bucket that you need to empty out and recreate. Whatever the reason, you want to replace an existing resource without changing the configuration. And that's why Terraform Taint was created. The Taint command marks a resource in the Terraform state data as tainted. This means that the next time you run Terraform apply, that resource will be destroyed and recreated. The configuration for the resource will not change, but the actual resource will be replaced. Let's take a look at an example. If you're following along at home, you can find the code for this demo down in the description or just go to GitHub Ned1313 Terraform Tuesdays. In this configuration, I have a single resource, an Azure resource group. I've already run Terraform apply and the resource group has been created. Now I want to replace it. The command is Terraform taint and then the identifier for the resource. In this case, it's Azure RM resource group dot main. Before we run a plan, let's take a look at what Terraform actually did when I ran the taint command. Running a Terraform state show against the resource shows that it has been tainted. Now, if we look at the contents of the state file, the resource group has a property called status and it's set to tainted. This is how Terraform knows to replace the resource. Now let's run a Terraform plan and after a few moments, Terraform comes back and lets us know that the resource group will be deleted and recreated, and it also tells us the reason is because the resource is tainted. That's good information to have. If you want to undo the taint on a resource, the corresponding command is Terraform untaint, and the syntax is the same as taint. I'll run Terraform untaint Azure RM resource group dot main. If we take a look at the state file again, that status property has been removed entirely. Now, if we run a Terraform plan, after a few moments, Terraform tells us that no changes are necessary because the taint has been removed and the target environment matches the configuration. All this seems pretty copacetic, so why is taint bad? If you've been following this channel or the changes to Terraform over the last couple of years, you know that HashiCorp is trying to move away from imperative commands and towards a declarative model for all operations that affect state. They are also trying to ensure that only the Terraform apply command is used to make changes to state data. That's why there is now a moved block and an import block, and soon there will be a removed block. These replace the imperative commands Terraform state MV, Terraform import, and Terraform state RM with a declarative counterpart. The idea is that you should be able to make all changes to state declaratively through the configuration and the apply command. Now, why make this change? Well, it's all about the state data and being able to preview changes without impacting other team members. 
If you run a Terraform state MV or a Terraform taint command, you are altering state data without making a change to the configuration. In a collaborative environment, this can cause problems. For a very simple example, let's say that I need to replace a virtual machine in my environment, but I can't do it until after hours. So I run a Terraform taint command to mark the VM for replacement, but I forget to tell my team members that I did this. One of them is making other changes to the configuration and they run a Terraform plan. In the plan review, they completely miss my VM change since there's no difference in the code and they aren't really looking for it in the plan. They approve the plan and run Terraform apply. Now my virtual machine has been recreated during regular business hours and I'm getting a call from my boss. The tank command creates like a ticking time bomb in state data waiting to go off at an unexpected moment whenever someone decides to run and apply. And that's why taint is bad. Fortunately, the alternative is simple. Starting in Terraform 0.15, the dash replace flag was added to the Terraform plan and apply commands. This flag allows you to replace a resource without changing the configuration. It's the same as running a Terraform taint followed by a Terraform apply, but it's all done in one command. You can also repeat the flag multiple times to replace multiple resources. Since the replace flag can be used with the plan command, you can preview the changes before you make them. And more importantly, you can preview the changes without altering your state data. This is a much safer way to replace resources. If you save the execution plan and then someone else makes a change to the config and applies it, your execution plan will be shown as invalid when you try to apply it and you'll know that you need to rerun the plan. Let's try the replace flag with our previous example. The replace flag exists for both the plan and apply commands. So I'll run terraform plan dash replace equals Azure RM resource group dot main. After a few moments, Terraform comes back and tells us that the resource group will be replaced. And it also tells us that the replace flag was used. If we run a Terraform apply with the same flag, we get the same result with a prompt asking us to confirm the changes. Once I confirm the changes, Terraform goes ahead and replaces the resource group. It's really just that easy. Now, you might be thinking, Ned, you said that HashiCorp was trying to move away from imperative commands and do everything through the configuration, but the replace flag is still part of an imperative command. What gives? And you know what? You're right. The replace flag is still part of the imperative plan and apply commands. And if you're running everything through an automation pipeline, there's no easy way to use it. You'd have to clue something together to make it work. Maybe use a commit message to kick it off or a PR comment, not really sure. Do I love this? No, it would be great to have a solid alternative for the replace flag in an automated setting. Now, hopefully you don't need to use the replace flag except in rare circumstances, and you can use the declarative model for most of your changes. Now, personally, I tend to use the replace flag when I'm working on a new configuration and debugging some issue with a particular resource. Most of the time it's a one-off thing and I don't need to worry about the automation workflow yet because I'm not in production, I'm just developing locally. By the time it gets rolled out to a collaborative environment, the configuration is working as expected and I don't need to use the replace flag. And that, my friends, is why Terraform Taint is bad, actually. It makes changes to state data outside of the plan and apply loop, and it can cause problems in a collaborative environment. The replace flag is the preferred method for replacing resources without changing the configuration, but it's not perfect either, since it can clash with your existing automation workflows. Thanks for watching this episode of Terraform Tuesdays. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. I'll be back in a couple weeks with another episode. Until then, keep calm and Terraform on. It's a new tagline. How do we feel about it? Keep calm and Terraform on? I, I could put it on a shirt. Do you want that on a shirt? Let me know if you want that on a shirt. I kind of want it on a shirt. Bye.